The topic of this video is obtaining information from or about the graph of a function. The first thing that I would like to share is this. We know that when we have an ordered pair x comma y, that x represents the input, y represents the output. And very often there is a machine, sometimes referred to as a relation, that connects input to output. For example, the name of that machine might be f. You can think of it this way. When an input x goes into a machine named f and the instructions are followed, the output that comes out is y. With this in mind, we can convert an ordered pair into function notation. You probably remember from a previous math class that f of x is the same thing as y. By putting these side by side, we have created a tool that allows us to convert an ordered pair into function notation. For example, let's say we use the ordered pair negative 14 comma 0. Well, the x is negative 14 and the y is 0. So to convert that into function notation, we simply replace each x with negative 14 and each y with 0. And we would get f of negative 14 equals 0. You can think of it this way. When the number negative 14 is put into a machine named f, what comes out is 0. All right, with this in mind, let's go ahead and solve this problem. Part A. What is f of negative 14? Well, that means that negative 14 is the input. It's the x. Our job is to find what is f of negative 14. That's the output. That's the y. So we go to our graph and we look for a point with an x coordinate of negative 14, which we see right here. Then all we have to do is figure out what's the y value, which we can see is 0. So the answer to this question is 0. f of negative 14 equals 0. OK, next problem. What is f of 6 approximately? Well, if you look at the graph, you see that many of the points on the graph are labeled, but not all of them. A point does not have to be labeled on a graph in order for you to use that graph to answer the question. So let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. What is f of 6 approximately? The thing inside the parentheses is the input, which makes it x. So f of 6 means x is 6. Now, when you want to find f of 6, that means you're looking for what is the y coordinate when x equals 6. So let's see if we can find the point on this graph that has an x of 6. Well, here's the x-axis, and here's 4, and here's 8. So 6 must be halfway in between, which would be at this spot. And if you follow that vertically downward until you reach your blue curve, you find this dot right here on the graph. This is 6 comma something. Our job is to figure out what is the something? What is the y coordinate of that point? Now, you might look at that and think it's negative 2. Well, look more carefully. We're going to use a straight edge here. And we're going to draw a horizontal line from this point over to the y-axis with the hope that we're going to be able to see exactly what the y-coordinate is of this point. Okay, so there we go. I've drawn a horizontal line. Now we know that this part of the y-axis right here is negative 2 because the scale here is that we're counting by 2. If that's negative 4 and that's negative 8, then in between, that must be negative 2, and that must be negative 6. Okay, so we've got negative 2 and negative 4. What's halfway between negative 2 and negative 4? Negative 3. So halfway between, right there, would be negative 3. And we can see that our little orange line is not at negative 2 or negative 3. It appears to be halfway in between, so we're going to call that negative 2.5. So we can write that f of 6 is approximately equal to negative 2.5. Now, what if you looked at that graph and you said, mm, no, I think it's negative 2.4. Would that be a correct answer? Sure. 
How about negative 2.6? Absolutely. But negative 2 is not a correct answer. Negative 3 is not a correct answer. There's a small amount of subjectivity whenever the question asks you to approximate. Okay, let's move on to our next task. Is f of negative 6 positive or negative? So, we find the point on the graph with an x-coordinate of negative 6, which is right here. f of negative 6 would be the y-coordinate, which is 6, and 6 is positive, so the answer is positive. We know that f of negative 6 is equal to 6, which is positive. Okay, now, all three parts of this problem have something in common. In each one, we were provided with the x-coordinate and asked to find the y-coordinate. But in the next three parts of this problem, we are going to be provided with the y-value and asked to find the x-value. So let's proceed slowly and carefully because this can be tricky. All right, part D. For what number's x is f of x equal to 0? Well, the first thing that I would recognize about this problem is that it says numbers. That means I'm looking for x, and I'm probably looking for more than one, because this is a plural word, numbers. The other thing that I would notice is that it says f of x equals 0. And it's very important for you as the math student to recognize the difference between x and f of x. They are different. x is x f of x is y. So when this says f of x equals 0, one way you can think about that in your mind is to say, well, this is just y is 0. And if you think about it, if y is 0, that must mean we're sitting on top of the x axis. So what are the points from our graph that are sitting on top of the x axis? What are the parts of our graph that have a y of 0? Well, that would be this one. That would be this one, and that would be this one. And remember that the question is asking for what number's x. We know that the y's are all 0. What they want to know is what are the x's. Well, the x's are negative 12, negative 2, and 8. And we're going to write that in set notation. Negative 12, negative 2, and 8. There were three answers to this question. Okay, great, let's move on, next one. For what number's x is f of x equal to negative four? Okay, so now we're looking for the points on the graph that have a y value of negative four. Let's see if we can find such points. Well, I see one here, four comma negative four. So this is a point that has that property. But is it the only one? Well, if you look carefully, you're going to see, oops, I have a mistake here. This should be negative 14, negative 4. If you look carefully, you can see that there actually is a second point on the graph that has a y-coordinate of negative 4. It's right here. And so with that, we're actually able to answer our question. There are only two x's this time that have a y of negative 4, and those x's are negative 14, as well as 4. Now, before we move on to part F, there's something that I would like to point out about the previous two solutions. Let's talk about D for just a moment. So with D, we had the equation f of x equals 0, and we know that f of x is the same as y. So let's see if we can connect this to our previous math learning. What kind of line is y equals 0? Well, it's a horizontal line at a height of 0. In fact, if you draw the line y equals 0, you'll find that it's the x-axis. It's this pink line. Now, how many times does this horizontal pink line intersect this blue curve? One, two, three. And how many answers did we get? Three. So another way we can solve problems of this type is to simply draw the horizontal line and look for the intersections of our curve with that line. Let's use that method on this problem. For what number's x is f of x equal to 6? Well, let's draw a vertical line, y equals, excuse me, I apologize, a horizontal line, y equals 6, and that will help us to answer this question. So y equals 6 is the horizontal line 
at a height of 6, and we look for where that horizontal line intersects the blue curve, and we find that it intersects it at just one location, right here. And since we're looking for x, what number's x, in this case it's just one number, then we report our answer as negative 6. All right, so that brings us to part g. For what number's x is f of x less than 0? So here's where we have to be very thoughtful. Once again, we're going to think of f of x as y. So what they're saying is, what points on this graph have y coordinates that are less than 0? Well, think about what a y coordinate measures. If I asked you to plot a point, and I told you it's y coordinate, that tells you how far you have to go up or down to plot that point. So if y is less than 0, what that means is that you must have gone down if you started at the origin. Points that have a y-coordinate less than 0 are below the x-axis. So let's go ahead and draw, directly on top of our graph, the points that are below the x-axis. Okay, I'm going to do this in... Let's do it in pink. All right, the points that are below the x-axis would be this part of the graph down here, and this part of the graph down here. And that's it. That's the part of the graph that is below the x-axis. So our job is to figure out which parts, which x-coordinates of those points we're going to present as part of our final answer. Okay. So we know that any point from here to here is going to have a y-coordinate that's less than 0. The first such point is the end point, negative 14. So we're going to start at negative 14, and we're going to travel negative 14, negative 13.9, negative 13.8, negative 13.7, etc., etc., until we get to 12. Negative 12, excuse me. Now, can we include the point at negative 12? The answer is no, because the y-coordinate at that point is 0, and we're only interested in points that have a y-coordinate that is less than 0, meaning negative. But we can get as close to this point as we want before we actually reach it. So for example, negative 12.1, negative 12.01, negative 12.001 negative 12.000001. In other words, we're going to create an interval with a parenthesis at negative 12, but a bracket at negative 14. Why? Well, at negative 14, the y value is negative, less than 0, so we have to include it. But at negative 12, it's not less than 0, it's equal to 0, so we have to exclude it. All right, now we move on to the second piece where we are less than zero. The x's are negative two, and as we travel along, we go all the way to where the x's are eight. Now we just have to figure out what symbols should we put here. Well, at negative two, y is zero, which is not less than zero. So we must exclude negative two. At 8, y is 0, which is not less than 0, so we must exclude 8. But we remember that we can get as close to 8 as we want, but without actually reaching it. So for example, 7.9, 7.99, 7.999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999, 7.9999
All right, and that is the end of this topic.